Would you like to support Cubs Out Loud? One way is to join us over on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, patrons get early access to our shows, the pre and post show, and various other rewards. You can learn more at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Thanks to all of our patrons for their support in making this podcast. September 12th, 2021, I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right, I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea, I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. And welcome to Cubs Out Loud, the Bear Podcast of Indetermined Length, episode number 616. And uh, I, I, I just I just say we should uh, uh, get right into it and do uh, this. Just eat it, eat it. Let's talk about food, Gary. Or, or not. not. <laughs> Perhaps that's the more accurate way to say. There we go. The show I mean, about. we're talking about it. Eating we it are. doesn't matter altogether. Well, no, 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 no. This is part of therapy. You, like, get these things out of your system. You <laughs> have a conversation. You recognize you have a problem. Oh, um, <laughs> let's, let's wait until let's wait until Edward's back on the show to talk about actual therapy. I was just thinking about that, <laughs> but I'm pretty sure he'd be like, "Really?" Because like, that's not really my focus. My <laughs> this is this is I don't know. Maybe he might want to talk. Uh, might find something that makes him talkable. And he might have associated something. I don't know. Mm. I mean, I don't know. There are things you can't associate. He's, there are some... he's, he's he's the smarter one, so mm. he's in, the in nice that category therapist. specifically. <laughs> he's the one that actually has a degree. There, there, that's true. He is the most professional amongst us in this in that area. So, and he's just getting more professional. I tell you, anyways. Mm. Professional. Where were we, Gary? Gary, explain what we're talking about. We're all oh, like, well, it's, it's, it's yeah, so we're taking our divergence in this series. Normally, when we do a Let's Talk About Food, it's our favorite things. It's our preferences, our desires, our, you know, mm. things that really tantalize our taste buds. Mm. And then we decided to take a left turn at Albuquerque, and okay. we are really just uh, going to talk about the things you know, that we're not fans of or we're not fans of. And maybe we learned a lesson and perhaps we will never <laughs> partake yeah. um, in, in, in certain things. So we've got a couple of categories just to break through uh, in this case. But I thought it was kind of uh, just, um, insightful. And maybe some people will d agree with us, not necessarily everyone, because most of the things I see already on the dock I know of things, I've had some of them, um, and I know other people that eat them. And so that means that it's not a universal 100% everyone's like, hell no, um, mm -hmm. you know, kind of thing. Yeah. So our first category oh. is childhood disgust. So this is things when we were young, when we were single digits, um, maybe a teen, that you were like, you know, like you just really weren't into that. And apologies to everyone for the ASMR moment now, now if that was a trigger. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, you know, yeah. when you were a kid, like you were just like, uh, no, 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 no. Like you, you would t throw a temper tantrum, have a hissy fit, um, pout, scream, cry, uh, you know, just, you know, there was, there was no way in H E double hockey sticks you were gonna um partake in this mm. or and if you did you probably were miserable you may have cried um and felt that you were being traumatized as a child unless you had mm. parents like me who were just just too nice <laughs> that's nice <laughs> they tailored to, to your taste oh that's yeah sweet. 
not all of us had that experience apparently. Yeah. <laughs> so, remember, I grew up in in Minnesota. You know, you've heard the the phrase Minnesota. Oh, don't nice, you right? know? Yeah. So, uh, David, why don't you go first? What is what is the thing from your childhood? Oh, is the kind of thing you were like? Um, um, DNA. So. Um, and you may have to describe this or explain oh, it because I don't think everyone knows this term. Okay. So um, let me get a little definition that before I forget because I'm oh. very concerned. But because I, I've I've literally mentally blocked this from my mind. Um because I, oh, I mean oh, great. oh god, looking at this pic oh oh even looking at these pictures is triggering. Oh god, that's really bad. Anyway, so um gross food one of the grossest things i've ever had to eat and was forced to eat as a as a child was um it's chitterlings but it's pronounced like for us chitlins okay and for those that don't know um um uh, it is made from the large intestines of a hog so it's pig intestines is what is what chitlins oh are. yeah okay yeah, I I was I was I presumed it was awful, yeah. um, and that's not a w o f u l a l s. Right, and so for those that aren't familiar, um, awful o f f a l is considered the entrails or internal organs of an animal being used as food. So there's a large category of things that fall underneath that, mm-hmm. and chitterlings apparently is one of them. Sorry, what was that word again? I've never heard that word oh, before. O f f a l. Awful. A-L. Yeah. Sorry. Repeat again slowly. OFF. <laughs> Thank you. Here, I'll put A-L-S. it in the chat. So, which is not to be confused <laughs> with with the word that sounds identical, but is spelled differently. Like awful. Yes. Right. Everybody thinks when they hear awful, they think of A-W-F-U-L. Mm-hmm. And that gets confusing because most people think awful is Awful. I mean, true. Like you can put those together, make a sentence. That awful is and, awful. Yeah, yeah. And it's, and it's like, are you being redundant? No, I'm t- no. I did two spelling. No, two spelling. And what's interesting is that O F F A L awful is derived from the Dutch word awful, which is A F V A L, um, which means uh, fallen off. It usually was used to describe parts of the animal that falls off. The butcher block, yeah. which yeah. would be, you know, the things that are not the primary cuts, uh, so to speak, that people would focus on. Yeah. So there you go. So there's your fun stuff. So um, um, every every so often. Um, so this was, gosh, this is. I mean, before my parents divorced and all this stuff like this was my dad would get an inkling and a hankering for for this for for chitlins and it's an all-day thing and it is disturbingly disgusting uh i think i have talked about this several times on the show um there is a scent and an odor and a smell to chitlins that is Mm -hmm. extremely off-putting but in order to cook them and eat them properly you have to cook like boil them you have to like so that you can get all the shit literally um out of them um so you boil them for long periods of time and then you serve them like in the like for me i remember them being served boiled and right that is never a thing i think a young child wants to eat and when you find out what it actually is it's even worse um yeah, that is the trauma with with food and yeah. children is that they don't want to know what it is. Like, I will own this is not my childhood discuss, but um, my parents, like my mom's family specifically, uh, w- are the hunter er types. Mm-hmm. So they would, you know, uh, do bow and arrow and and rifle, you know, kind of mm-hmm. shotgun hunting. And we would end up with different things. And like um, my parents learned very quickly not to tell me that we were eating venison when I was a mm-hmm, child, mm-hmm. because if I found out that I was eating deer, I would have an absolute meltdown mm-hmm. because oh, I right like that's, you know, <laughs> how could we, you know, because no. as a child, <laughs> we I were could the not, bad guys in that movie. Well, 
I could have cognizantly put together that every, most everything I was eating as a child was technically once alive and that it was – there was a lot of animal. But, you know, for some reason I did not equate a deer with a cow or a pig or a chicken. Like it just wasn't a thing, you know, or a wow. fish. Like it just – so, yeah. And um, I have heard story, mostly urban legend, about like, yes, but – chitterlings and, and what they are and things like that the, the thing is is that uh the tissue would need to be broke down as as a part of the process uh mm-hmm. so it does require a long cook yes. time it um, is a long cook time they are they are boil i'm reading like the wikipedia thanks wikipedia because you're awesome um chitterlings are carefully i'll quote chitterlings are carefully rent cleaned and rent several times before they are boiled or stewed for several hours mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, what I didn't see, and I don't think my dad did, because um, it probably would, or maybe would have helped. Um, a common practice is to place a half onion in the pot to mitigate the very unpleasant odor that can be particularly strong when the chitterlings begin to cook. Hmm. Okay. Um, I don't recall that. I just knew you could tell from several feet away. Mm. Like outside the house <laughs> when the chitlins were being made. Like you could tell. Because that is that is the smell that comes off of this shit. And I keep saying shit because it's shit. <laughs> it, so it, it, yeah. I get the impression that it was cooked in your kitchen, not outside. Correct. It's cooking in the kitchen. Oh. Like big old pot. Cause I mean, you know, you, you get like a did. Mm-hmm. Probably could cook it outside. You just need. To I mean, you could cook it outside, but you probably get the police called on you because they're like, "What is all this damn shit?" Like, <laughs> that, that would have been my preference. I would have been like, "Let's let's do a fire out outside on a grill top, and we'll put the pot on top of that, and like it can cook out there. Like, Mm-mm. let the scent be outside. Don't get it trapped in a house." My yeah. But then, like, I remember, like, because there was a pot and the i i have memories of like the red um like bucket that chitlins came in cuz mm. and then like yeah and just like yes you had to clean them cuz yeah, i i assumed you cleaned it before you cooked them but then you had to boil them cuz you had to get them soft well when you get them too soft they get chewy and that's never something another pleasant thing for me is just that having that chew factor that doesn't really go away like a almost like gum. Right. Yeah. yeah. So it it was bad. It was bad. It was bad. It was bad. And I was <laughs> I am I was super and it's still bad. <laughs> and it's still bad. You I will never ever have them uh again. Like like there, like there's mentions about, um, oh well, you can batter them up and like fry them, kind of like clams or whatever, like fried mm. clams or something like that. And I was just thinking, like, no, I, no, I no. I, <laughs> You're no. like pass. Not I move on. Yeah. I will move on. Um, yeah. Gary, you're next, I think. Oh yeah. yeah. Um. So I have two. They're kind of related. They're both vegetables. Um, I equated them equally as a child, and it was the Mm -hmm. illustrious broccoli and cauliflower. Mm. And they did not have to be served together. It could have been just cauliflower, just broccoli, combination of the Mm -hmm. two, um, the vegetable blend that includes them. Mm -hmm. Did not matter. My mother went on many diets in her lifetime, specifically most of them were when I was younger. And so I was subjected to all sorts of different like versions of of dietary plans of eating Mm -hmm. because because the whole family kind of participated Mm -hmm. to be supportive, my mother, my father and I. Um, So, yeah, there was a lot of different things. But I'll tell you what, like that was just something I could not get past. Mm -hmm. Uh, And. What I've discovered as as I grew up and became an adult is, um, I, like, I just didn't care for the bitterness of it. And some people might be like, it's not bitter. Well, your taste buds change roughly every seven years. Um, all the cells in the human body are replaced. And science has shown that on um, about seven years on average, like, that you find that foods taste different. So, like, things you used to eat, 
in a certain part of your life taste completely different than they did, you know, in a different part of your life. And it's usually the further away you are from that time frame. And that's what I've discovered. Like the broccoli and cauliflower tend to have a, a sulfurous kind of aspect to them. And so I'm, I wasn't a fan as a kid of the smell like mm. that. That would trigger me, um, let alone trying to eat it. And then, uh, yeah, like when I got older, probably post college, I ended up having some cooked broccoli once, some steamed broccoli. And I was like, oh, this isn't really that bad. Like, but I realized, you know, like it would be a long time before I would be like just steamed as a vegetable without much seasoning was going to be okay. Mm. Um, you know, for quite a while, I did the whole let me douse it in cheese sauce. Um, <laughs> yeah. Or yeah. or butter flavor, you know, I like I would do something to try to like, you know, cover up. Now, I will say this. Uh, these two foods I will eat now as an adult, but I want them cooked. I am just a, not a fan of the raw. So oh, like if, if someone puts out a crudite, you know, platter of vegetables, mm -hmm. you know, I, it's still funny to me to this day, people, you know, will look at, you know, oh, you know, and they'll just chomp on broccoli like it's nothing. And I'm like, no, that, it's just not, not quite the, the game uh -oh. for me. Not your bag. After yeah, bag, baby. You, you see, these, <laughs> these, uh, I, I kind of had the same thing, it, it, to be fair. But although with my cheese covered thing was peas. So it was like, oh, I'm going to make peas and then we would what? mix in some cheese with. But even that, wow. it's, I, I, it was more of like an enhancement <laughs> for me. It's like I liked them even more. But that like is good butter and salt. <laughs> That is such an early 80s, like, <laughs> dietary thing. It's just like, what we're going to do? We're going to put some cheese whiz with it. Yeah. That's uh -huh. like, you know, like today, everybody's like, put ranch on it. It's like, everything does not need fucking ranch. Um, <laughs> but, but like, like your, it, this is just an example of how our lives are, are definitely different. Like, like broccoli and cauliflower. Yeah, I never really, I don't think I ever really had a problem with them, and mo and, and even raw. But I think that's mostly because no matter what, they always had a dip. So really, what it was more uh, was the dip was a a just a vessel. <laughs> it was a vessel for the dip. For the dip. <laughs> <laughs> well, right. I mean, there's many times in life you're just like, baby, this is just to get the other thing into me, right? Like, mm. you know, that, that's what that is. Are we? Are we? Are we? Are we still talking about food? There? Yes. <laughs> baby, it's oh, another matter altogether. But yes, uh -huh. technically we yeah. are. Okay. Well, how about you, Mr. Or how about you, Mr. Jeff? Because you have something okay. on there that so I actually got is, down first. This ends a, a part of this is uh, also a family thing. Okay. Um, in the fact that my mother mm -hmm. is the only one in my immediate family, at least. I'm not sure about the rest of my family, but of my immediate family who liked liver. God bless it. So liver and onions. Well, yes, he was yes, all yes. about it. Everybody my, else was like, "Ew, gross." My Even mother my went dad. on a diet, and this was one of the acceptable protein foods that she could have regularly. So we would go to a local restaurant, and she would get it like once a week, or if not, she would prepare it at home. No, baby, no, no, not not my gay. Yeah. But I, I will say say the other thing thing along with it. I think liver is kind of like yes. I don't think anybody gross. had much of a discussion. God, gross. But oh. um, my other thing is, and, and this, I, I'm going to say this has caveats because in general, I, I just label it as fish, but it's pretty much seafood. I do oh. not like seafood. This is, and to be fair, a lot of what this is, besides one thing that I have on my list, is I have tried. So this was in the lack of trying. <laughs> so, but like in fish, like the canned tuna, I'll eat that, like tuna salad sandwiches and, and such like that. And so I'm open to trying like a, a tuna steak because I like the uh -huh. like the shredded tuna that's in a can and everything. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, but so I I'm open to try that, but. I grew up in Minnesota, the land of 10,000 lakes. Walleye? 
Mm-hmm. Salmon. I, I've oh. tried salmon too. I, I know a Damn lot of people it. like salmon, but I don't like salmon. Jesus Christ. I, I have <laughs> tried shrimp. I don't like shrimp. Huh? What? Get out. <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> Honestly, I don't think I've tried lobster or crab, although, you know, kind of bugs. But basically what I've learned of even trying things from it is in general i don't like seafood mm. and any sort of seafood interesting it's that the one category I, I i will not go to it's and this has been like this from a kid i think i've had fish sticks but i don't know how much that really counts I mean, it's technically fish. But they're like the frozen <laughs> fish sticks. Yeah, no, I know what you mean. They're technically fish. That's why I'm laughing, because I love how David's like, he knows how the American like food industry is. It's technically fish. Like, tomato is a vegetable. It's yeah. Really fruit. But anyways, yeah. like, you know, how the government, you know, kind of deems certain things. So, you know, it's like well, chicken nuggets. It's chicken. Like yeah. Also, yeah. also, yes. The botanical labeling of a tomato is a fruit, but culinarily speaking, it is used as a vegetable. Correct. Well, it's actually used as an ingredient, and the government stepped in because certain corporations were like, this needs to be deemed as a vegetable, damn it. So pizza is considered healthy for children in school systems because it has Uh, tomato sauce uh, on it. Because culinarily, it's a vegetable. Well, botanically, eh. it's very Anyway, so so Jeff, um, um, oh, I don't know how I feel about that. I know you've mentioned it before, but like every time I think about it, I'm like, God, I, I'm not opposed to other people liking fish I, I and, and everything. It's just, gosh, I, and I will not I, say I, it's I, the smell. I, I will not use that as an excuse. It's not right. the smell. It's, it's not just, an excuse. It... I have. And it's not for lack of trying. I will yeah. have octopus though. Although the takoyaki God. balls um, in, that they make in Japan, I might be willing to try one of those because mm. they look good. But yeah, it's also you may octopus, not like. So you may, may try like it. it. Yeah, you may try it and then be done. But like, I'm, yeah, but the nice thing is, is while I think seafood in general tastes gross, um, it, I'm at least willing to try. Because yeah. something might surprise me. Yeah, something might surprise you. I'm a little surprised that. Well, actually, you do like tuna. I do like so, tuna. Yeah. So I could be. I I could see maybe like at least you're not fully out of fish. Um, yeah. But tuna is also, if I'm remembering correctly, it's one of the five. It's funny that you like tuna, but you don't like salmon. That's odd to me, because they're kind of not the same, but there's they're I, fattier. I kind of they're, see they're, they're, they're they're yeah. They're fatty Maybe I need to try salmon that. again. Uh, I because I haven't because I've had the this general. I don't like this. Uh, so interesting, interesting. Sorry, but, I'm just I'm sitting. I don't but think for about the like, category being discuss, lizard does that. Fish isn't necessarily. I don't really think it's disgusting. I just don't like it. Well, I mean, this is from the childhood, you know, and, and you have a whole different perspective when you're much younger. And, you know, the liver and onions thing to me was not only like the oh. um, the look of it, but the smell of it mm-hmm. um, and a little bit of the taste because I tasted it once and I was like, never again. Um, Wait, I mean, I think I bet. No, I don't even think so. It it would it would take a lot to convince me to try liver again. Because I, but I will admit, I bet every liver I've ever had has been overcooked. Well, like, right. I, I bet. And here's, here's the, the, like, one of the key things is, you know, like, uh, Drew and I, we used to go to a food show uh, years ago for uh, once a year. And we would go to all these different restaurants in the area. It was like a big deal. And one of the restaurants we'd love to go to um, that has since closed, fortunately, um, one of the things they were known for was that they did uh, fried chicken livers. And, it is one of the things that Drew really likes, and he yeah, lost his crazy. mind at this restaurant. Like, they sent him into an orgasmic orbit <laughs> and swore they were the best things ever. He'd never had them prepared like this before. 
And he, you know, this is like the second or third year in a row. I don't think it was the very first year. He was like, are you sure you don't want to try one? I was like, I'm telling you, I'm not going to like it. And it's your money for your dish. And I don't want to like upset you by eating some of it and not liking it and wasting it. And so I did try it. And I was like, nope, still don't like it. Like still not a fan. Um, There's, there's kind of specific reasons. I I don't want to get into it, but you know, it's just, you know, one of those things. Every time I think of liver, I think I just it. Oh. Yeah, and yeah. and Jim like like their fried chicken livers too, and I'm just like, nope. nope. Yeah. Nope. No. Nope. I'm good. Nope. Yeah. Nope. 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 Yeah, great. You can have you can have all of them. All that there, you can have all of that. Yeah. So I, as we move on to the next category, I would like to make a caveat here because I don't have anything, and it's. <laughs> I, and maybe it's just I can't think of it, but um, I really feel like the way some of the stuff that I ate as a child that I never really thought was disgusting or I didn't necessarily not like it, but maybe a different way of preparing. I've learned different preparing to taste like uh, peas with cheese. I don't need peas with cheese. Cheese with some, uh, the peas with some just some butter and salt. Yeah. That's, there you that's go. That's all I need. That's an evolution God, of it. of my my pea thing because I never had a problem with peas in general. I just preferred them with cheese when I was a kid, and now I don't need that cheese. So I've had evolutions with. Well, my you peas, didn't really get them with cheese. Nothing like, with cheese. Beyond is. liver and fish, <laughs> not much has has gone beyond that. So that's... yeah, sorry, don't mind me. I'm just I'm just making a point. <laughs> You're being specific. So uh, next category is can admit I was wrong. So these are foods that like when you were younger or in a previous part of your life, you were like, "Uh uh-uh, nope, not interested, pass. Like like if it was at a function and someone passed, you know, like a a large, you know, vessel or whatever, plate, bowl, whatever, you would just kind of keep on trucking. You'd be like, no, thank you. Um, however, you learned later that you uh, actually don't mind it, and it could be a couple of factors. Um, one of them could be preparation. It could be that people, you know, overcooked the item or undercooked the item. Um, they didn't mm-hmm. season it. Uh, they or, you know, like I was referencing it towards the top of the show that, you know, your taste just changed. Um, mm. And you discovered later on, you're like, oh, I don't actually, you know, I'm not revolted by this or whatever. So, um, you know, uh, in that case. So, Mr. Damon, what is your uh, your revelatory uh, uh-huh. food that you discovered? It's not that bad. So the big one that came to my mind when I read this um, was Brussels sprouts. Okay. I think every kid hates Brussels sprouts. They're they're you know it's a vegetable it's green it's leafy it's got a weird taste yada 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 like for one reason or another you you didn't you didn't like them they look like little like and if you were an 80s kid like one of the big things that you probably think they thought they looked like was the little um um from um um little shop of horrors it was it was audrey too oh yeah 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 so i personally didn't like them at, at all like it was one of the things i would push around my plate it would be the last thing you'd eat or you'd have to be forced to eat them as a kid and now now i fucking love this shit however however preparation is key okay like preparation is key probably when you had them as a kid you probably had them like steamed or stewed like you were like they were just like boiled or whatever you never really had them kind of like a green bean or something along those lines you never had them like roasted or um we just had some the other day um jim made his own balsamic vinaigrette Mm. and like roasted them with the balsamic vinaigrette on top of them delicious or you know with bacon you know everything's great with bacon um but it was it was not a, I mean, I won't say revolutionary, but it was definitely something that I realized, okay, it was probably just the way that they were prepared that wasn't 
the thing for me because when you when they're um boiled or what have you they're usually soft and mushy and 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 Mm -hmm. there's no real flavor they've absorbed all that water Mm -hmm. um i know the other a while back jim got a like we do the they'll sometimes do veggies in the bag they're just like Mm -hmm. they're frozen and just drop them in the microwave and you warm them up and one of them was brussels sprouts and i remember i didn't like them as much and then i realized why because they were the mushy like yeah right yeah interesting yeah yeah i didn't really have brussels sprouts as a kid um it was not a vegetable that crossed our like Mm -hmm. plates in the kitchen but um they came on the scene for me probably around college Mm-hmm. A little after, and everything you're describing, like about the the not great preparation version, was what I like had been experiencing. They were mostly boiled to death, or mm-hmm. just like, and and the reality is, you know, cabbages, um, in a way, you know, the Brussels sprouts are like little baby cabbages, and they kind of, you know, can remind you of farts, and you know, <laughs> people just aren't really hip to that, um, mm-hmm. you know, certain. Uh, foods, especially vegetables, can you know kind of be odiferous, uh, and it's just an, an issue. Um, yeah. So, but I agree with you. Like later on, when you've had them prepared, uh, you know, and they've been lovingly taken care of and had some things done to them, you know, they can be roasted uh, with some uh, balsamic vinegar and potentially with some bacon with yeah. um, fresh grated parmesan. parmesan yeah yeah like there's this it's a whole like other world and it's similar a little bit to what jeff was talking about how like you know if you if you do things to a food you can be much more amenable to eating it because then it sort of becomes a vessel for the other things true <laughs> honestly yeah. i'm not even sure if i ever have had brussels sprouts interesting yeah well, you could order some for a home delivery, and you could try them, and then see whether or not you yeah, find a recipe like that has that. has a good thing. Maybe uh, yeah, the crack casserole. Like, so think of things you might like. Because I'll be honest. Okay, I'll go. I'll I'll be honest with you. Like Brussels sprouts. I think Brussels sprouts on their own, on their own, like just like salt and peppered, or you know, buttered or whatever, and even roasted. Probably eh, okay. You probably want something else to complement the flavor um, of them. I mean, isn't that the big case of most uh, vegetables? Is I mean, true. In the, the, themselves are side dishes. Or get a good fucking seasoning on that shit. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it kind of depends on what really tickles your fancy as to what you prefer mm-hmm. um, for something. So. Yeah, because I was listening to David and I was like, I don't know, like I could probably kind of get into that. But the more I think about it, like I think the big thing is about texture, like manipulating and changing it slightly. Because I agree with you, like Brussels sprouts raw are different than Brussels sprouts like steamed or mm-hmm. microwaved or boiled. Like mm-hmm. they do tend to get rather soft and uh, um, yeah. And if they're like fried... Um, you know, like pan fried um, Mm -hmm. or roasted, like I I think, and that's true of all vegetables. Like it's a whole different culinary experience, Mm -hmm. you know, to to taste that kind of thing and be like, oh, hmm." you know, that's, um, you know, yeah. All right. Gary. Um, So this guy, (laughs) I realize it's kind of a big thing of the way I phrased it. I was like pretty much vegetables that are not potatoes or corn. Um. Because when I was a kid, I realized now that I sort of took after my father. My father would never, never in his life be caught eating anything green. Like I infamously somewhere in my basement of of, of like older stuff have a picture of my father at a convention because I took a picture with like a Kodak kind of Instamatic box camera. He was literally putting a piece of salad in his mouth. And I had never in like (laughs) 16, 15, 14 years of my life seen him eat anything that was green uh, or leafy as a vegetable. It was just kind of an infamous <laughs> thing about him. Um, so I kind of uh, sort of took a little bit of that. And, you know, like I was talking earlier about, you know, discussed with pro- broccoli and cauliflower, pretty much most vegetables I've discovered as I've gotten older, I'm like, I they're not all gross or, you know, yeah. things to 
a void in that void. case. And now that I have this year, I joined a CSA. Um, and so, you know, it's a service where you are being supportive of a local community uh, farm. And basically you pay them, you know, uh, for their their products. And so every week I get another, you know, grouping of vegetables, produce, basically. Um, and, you know, so I've, you know, got uh, right now in the fridge, I've got zucchini. Uh, I've got some peppers. I've got cauliflower. Uh, so, you know, I've got red cabbage. Um, so, I mean, it, like there's, I've already, like, as we're talking today, I'm already thinking ahead. I'm like, okay, what am I going to do? Like, I'm really intrigued, uh, because actually I have a huge head of cauliflower. I have to figure out what to do with. And I was like, and I saw a recipe recently for grilling cauliflower, like a steak. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I was like, this is intriguing. Mm -hmm. So yeah, pretty much if it was a potato product or a corn, you probably Protein. couldn't put it in, yeah, you couldn't get it in front of me. Like yes. even carrots i was kind of eh about oh uh, it, carrots but here's Only the thing my mom was to myself, like quick carrots as a kid when you when you and, and this is what i'm gonna say my mother may she rest in peace would ruin food like this oh. woman has made glue out of pasta oh Ooh. lord like oh and, and i still to this day am puzzled as to how the hell she did it other than overcooking mm -hmm. um so infamously, my mother was not a good cook. So there was probably a lot of foods that I just wasn't a fan of because she just wasn't a, all that great yeah. with culinary cook, skills cook and mm -hmm. overcooked things. Mm. And and vegetables was kind of one of them. Like while I love carrots, and carrots generally are sweet and very um, you know enjoyable. Baby, like if you overcook them, they you know like everything they just bleh, you know yeah. they're kind of. It's like it's dead, Jim. You you've done it. There's nothing. <laughs> stop! Left. Stop! It's already dead. Yeah, my mom and I, were, <laughs> when I was a kid, would be the only two of my family who would eat cooked carrots. Actually, we oh, still the case. And and it's there's this right consistency where where mm -hmm. there's a slight mush, but there's still kind of like a, a some crisp. It, not a crisp. Our, but it's our it's solid. It, it's more solid. It, They're al dente. Yeah, al dente mm -hmm. would probably be a would be a good one. There's still some substance to it that you still need to chew through, and it's not like a silky move right through it. That's, and just oh. put some butter on that, and that's all it needs, and it's delicious. And that's bad because I'm the opposite. But again, it has to do again. Part of it has to do with like bad preparation. Mm -hmm. yeah. I can eat carrots, and I love carrots, and I can do like you know cooked carrots fine. But I remember, and it just like popped in my head. I remember like carrots from like the cafeteria at lunch mm -hmm. and eating it because it was always so, like you said, mushy. Yeah, or, they would, or they would, they would overcook the carrots. Yeah, yeah, it was just so bad. But yeah, um, it's, yeah. it's still f like forkable. Like you would still, yes, to, you can easily put the f fork through, but there's still some resistance on it. Anyway. Sorry. <laughs> For those of you that cannot see the visuals that are happening right now, I'm, I'm just, just trying to poke a fork into a carrot. And, and somebody, then Damon's I'm trying to do somebody, a completely somebody different thing. Somebody is trying to make something else happen. <laughs> Anyways. I'm doing the same thing. Oh, anyway. Carrots. Ready to move on to the next category? <laughs> <laughs> um, this is never, ever on my life. Like, Scout's Honor. Swear to God. Right, like whatever you believe in, yeah, yeah, like, Man. yeah, I will. That you cannot, if like this is probably borderline. If I was, you know, being tortured, you know, to reveal, you know, s secrets, something or other, this is possibly the the one thing that you're like hell to the no, um, you know, uh. So, David, like, yours really surprised me because I read the last part first and I was like, okay, like, that's kind of, a, you know, that's kind of a well-known thing. Like, it's a very divisive kind of food. But then I saw the full description and I was like, oh, wait, that's not even the same thing. No, no, no. no. I mean, so, first of all, um, yes to just oysters, right? I will I will, I will, will say that right now. Okay. I, will, I don't like the idea of a raw oyster. 
Never will I eat that ever, 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 <laughs> ever. Okay. But this goes the next step. So this is the next step. And this is um, Rocky Mountain oysters. They're not even oysters. They are not oysters, no. Right. Right. Uh, they're essentially bull testicles. So how did I find out about Rocky Mountain oysters? Well, Damon went to college in Berea, um, Kentucky. So um, it was one of the first times I heard about Rocky Mountain oysters was while I was in college. And someone mentioned it. And I, I, I knew I wasn't a fan of oysters. So give that. But then they finally told me what that was. And I was like, no. Oh, God, no. No, no, I will. No, I, the, I, the, no, the idea, the audacity to gall. No, I would never eat. Like, no, this will never. I no, I just can't. I keep saying no because it's just the thought of even thinking about eating this just bothers my mind. It boggles me. It it befuddles me to the point where I'm like tripping over my own words. No, thank you. No, ma'am. No, this will this will not. I will not eat these. Sam, I am like I. So will. <laughs> I'm going out on a limb. I'm going to presume that on October 5th, you will not be celebrating these. Sure to fuck no. Because <laughs> apparently that is um, Rocky Mountain Oyster Day. Well, that's good to know. <laughs> <laughs> David's like, guess what? I'm not eating that day. Or any other day I, I of I any be, year. I would be willing to try it. It's so I'm not going to guarantee anything, but I'd be willing to yeah. try it. I, I, uh, uh. I'm I'm willing to try them, but here's the thing: is it's really like we I I hate to say it, we've been harping on this, but it's really about preparation. Yeah, like, like looking I, at it, yeah. like uh, seeing a picture of one whole, like that's the part where I go. Okay, but then like seeing how they can be, you know, uh, you know, divided up and and prepared and stuff. Oh, um, looking at oh, looking at the uh, you a picture on the Wikipedia for the fried them. fried ones, they they look like just like popcorn chicken ball or something like that. Well, they're balls, all right. Yep. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Google never fails to surprise me because <laughs> people also ask. The number one question is, do Rocky Mountain oysters have sperm in them? <laughs> I'm so abused by this. Because, uh-huh. you know. I'm a little, okay, I'm a little scared. Like, I'm looking at this, and, like, I'm looking at some of these pictures, and I, oh, dear me. Um, like, you, like, I agree with you, Jeff. Like, I'm looking at the picture of them fried, like, like look like deep fried, and it's probably, like, like sliced are cubed or something where it's just like little beats and pieces of it and they're fried like they're it like looks like they're fried all out nuggets, like like yeah. It, yeah look like nuggets and i'm like i oh what's bad is imagine okay. you're at like a space and you have like someone like made a whole bunch of them and just like threw them in a pan didn't tell you what they were and it's just like fried little pieces of of meat if I wasn't thinking about it and I didn't, you know, I w- you know, maybe I was hungry. I'll just put it like that. Let's throw that out there. And I just scooped up a pan of them and threw them on a, on a plate. I would look at those and think they're like clams or something. And I might be okay with that. All right. So but, this is confusing. I'm looking at an article at the very top picture of like, baby, those look like chicken tenders. <laughs> like those look like that looks like deep fried southern chicken that does uh-huh. not look and as i'm scrolling through and looking at all these other pictures i was like yeah that first picture doesn't look like any of the other pictures in this article yeah. i am so confused as to why that would be the first picture other than it looks really appetizing and i it says Mm-mm. it's from shutterstock but baby i i debate that this is this actually shows <laughs> What we think it is. This looks oh, like southern fried have, chicken. There's a video I may have to watch because I like her stuff. Um, um, Emmy made. Yes. She apparently tries it for the first time. I may have to watch her video. Okay. It's been a few years ago. Oh, it, it appeared. It premiered on my birthday, like three years ago. That's nice. Um, <laughs> sorry, random. Don't mind that's my okay. randomness. But yeah, that's all right. That's mine. Okay. Like it. It. it 
it, like there's this one article I'm seeing from uh, Forger Chef where which I'm seeing it it looks like it's cooked and then it's sliced and it just looks like pork chop almost. Yeah, it's sliced. There's one that has it like there's a recipe apparently for smoked ones, and like Mama, that's like that looks like turkey. Like <laughs> oh, is that right? Right, right. That's the one. I was like, that looks like a ham. Yeah. Like Stop that it. that particular picture of what it is, like after it's been, I guess, is that the one that's smoked? Is that the one you're, yeah, it's the same article. Smoked like I look at it and I'm like, it looks like an itty, itty bitty ham. Like, yeah. I'm like, so that's intriguing that mm-hmm. it looks that way. Because to me, that just looks like, um, do you know what I'm talking about? Like you can buy them in the store. Yeah. The like store, the, the store. <laughs> yeah, like a like a like a processed ham, almost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a little, like a little, you know, like and a little ham, like net little or whatever. Little. That's that's what I thought that was. I was like, a little, well, little bitty not... ham or a little bitty turkey. Yep, I've yeah. seen them. I've seen them. Interesting. Oh Jesus Christ. Anyway, See, so that's, it looks good, but when you know what it, it is, it kind of like ruins the whole thing. Y'all gonna fool some bitch someday. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you should try some something. of this turkey. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna be I don't mad. see what the big deal is. Where they're gonna get you is where they're gonna be like, "Well, I heard you like putting balls in your mouth, so this is." What <laughs> Anyways, moving on. Yeah. Scary. Um. Uh, so I this... think this is kind of a broad category. It, it, I'm... It, and I'm with you on this. I'm kind of sticking to it though. Like, mm-hmm. and 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 here's the thing. Like, y'all, I'm approaching fifty. So if I haven't enjoyed it at this point in my life, I don't expect to. Um, and I just say shellfish. And I realize like that's kind of, you know, a big old like conglomerate. But the reality is I'm just not into. <laughs> Find it out, Gary. <laughs> yeah. we, we, I'm, just not, I'm, just, I'm just not uh, really a seafood person. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong. Given my size, I see food, I eat it. That's different. Uh, uh, anyways, bad dad joke. So, um, <laughs> but no, the reality is, is, you know, I just, I never cared to try it as a kid. And then as I got older, like it got stranger and weirder for me. And I remember in my twenties being like, why do people eat this? And I don't know why it really stuck out to me. It was mostly around like shrimp and mm-hmm. lobster specifically, but like, yeah, like, you know, just the whole bivalve and crustacean kind of category grouping thing. I'm like, nope, like I'll eat fish, not often, because um, what I've realized is like I want good tasting, well prepared fish. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, given the amount of pollution that we've created in the globe, like I don't really want to eat fish very much. Right. Because it's it's difficult to find something that ha- comes from a healthy source or even if it's farmed like then there's the whole humanity of the farming and different aspects so it's just it's kind of complicated for me and trust me i realize that i'm being a complete hypocrite because i'm not talking about how the other animals that we can you know yeah, consume yeah, yeah. Or, or raise but yeah cattle and chicken right yeah yeah we could we you can go on a whole tangent so i mean but i <laughs> but i've notably been like changing especially you know a lot recently especially i think it's the csa you know the weekly thing has kind of brought this out of me like i've been paying attention and like i try to buy eggs from you know free range like you know chicken free and, yeah i mean things of that nature there's a local uh farm that sells, uh, you know, um, beef specifically, uh, mostly and stuff like that, that there's a part of me that's like, okay, you know, and, and maybe some pigs in that, you know, like they're, I forget what the term of it is. They're the type of farm where everything is free range, but there's a terminology for it where like they okay. rotate them like sustainable. Yeah. But there's a, it's a new term I hadn't heard of, but the oh. whole point is like that they, um, intentionally shift where the herds go across Mm. the property to give the land like an opportunity to kind of replenish but what's interesting is there's this whole thing about how like you know the animals will like scratch at the ground and kind of like claw it up a little bit and you know obviously they will defecate and so like a lot of that like kind of puts nutrients back into the soil instead of just like depleting 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 mm. it makes it killing everything over time mm. it's, it was kind of interesting i'll have to look up the term but anyways so like 
to me, you know, it's like it is quite possible for us to have good quality like items, but there's a big butt here. Um, it costs. Mm-hmm. And it's much more expensive than, you know, the the factoryization of things and, you know, that kind of stuff. And so, yeah, we we fall into the whole trap here, at least in America, of like the um, convenience of mm-hmm. things, you know, and yeah. I pay attention to that because I'm like, oh, you know, four dollars for a dozen eggs is a hell of a lot more than like 88 cents on sale. But, you know, it's like, how much do I want to, you know, pay attention to that kind of stuff? And what I'm realizing is like. You can be selective with some of the food that you buy, um, and you might buy less of it because of the cost, but there might also be a payoff, you know, in terms of the the health of that. All that being said, um, yeah. Yeah, not, selfish. Selfish I'm, is just not kind of my gig. And it's so funny it's because weird. I see people, you know, go nuts for things. Um, yeah. They're like, woo, shrimp. And, you know, uh, 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 I'm like, yeah. oh, okay. Like me and my right get out with the shrimp. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'll put it like this. I will say, okay. Yeah, so I was for the strike and sh- shrimp combo, and I'm like, ah, can I just have the steak? <laughs> yeah, I will say this much. Um, oh God. So there are. I will admit to myself, I like shellfish. However, um, I'm not one to work for stuff. So like, yes, I don't mind shellfish, like lobster and 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 crab and um it's whatever tail that's already cracked open yeah. and you just no i don't i don't need no 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 mm-hmm. no i don't want that no if i'm gonna have the lobster the lobster's all the meat's already out of the out of it out right. of the shell yeah no well, not it, like not cracked open removed <laughs> no, so you don't want to even like use the the shell as a dish like you don't have to do any work; you just eat it out nope. of the. Jeff, Jeff, Jeff. We've been doing this show for a very long time now. Damon is a princess. <laughs> he wants things already <laughs> taken care of for him. I yeah. love you dearly, but I've realized this because this is not the first time this has come up over the years. You're like, it's not Shay, baby. No. It is the truth. It is it, all tea. Is you're like, you're like, I don't need, I don't need to fuss. Like this is not my, this is not what I want to be involved in. Yeah, no, no fuss. Like, if I recall correctly, sure. you're not a fan of eating with your hands necessarily. Correct. Like, to get well, all messy in that. So yeah, correct. Wow. Like yeah, like like Are shrimp and like like with a fork. No boneless deer. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Just like you eat chicken wing with a fork, and David's like boneless. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> no, How about your fried bones. chicken? Like just general, like KFC okay. fried chicken. Um. So again, with a fork. Is there is there a boneless variety? Right. Boneless right. I mean, that's taken. called chicken so, tenders. Yeah, chicken strip. But chicken even strip, chicken, chicken strips tenders. You can use with the finger. I can I can eat those with my fingers. Chicken I will nuggets? eat with my fingers. Don't get me wrong. I will eat chicken things nuggets. with like my fingers. Chicken. Yes, I eat chicken nuggets. I eat chicken tenders with my fingers and my hands. I, she, I think she Dave is, is part of the. I don't know. <laughs> I am a little prissy. Yes, I, I will own I, that. I will admit that. As an adult, you will own it. I will I, own it. That, All right, listen. That I is eat not an I insult want, to me. And I'll eat it how I want it. <laughs> <laughs> you can throw it at me this. as an insult, but I'm owning it. The entire I will time. Say this. I think Damon is a part of the camp of people who may not enjoy food in its natural state. And by that, I mean being, I mean, there is a bit of a psychological thing to be reminded of what it is that you're eating. Um, yeah. So if it got bones in it, like, and that was a thing for me as a kid, like Jeff, you talk about liver and fish. Like I was not a fish fan when I was a kid. My mother would get Lake Erie perch every year from her family and we would have like you know uh oven roasted white fish and it drove me insane because you know while while the you fish had already been filleted the fact that there are these little like bones in it like these mm-hmm. like you know not microscopic but like these little filament kind of mm-hmm. deals like 
no ma'am like that was not a thing as a child that i was a fan of or appreciated because it wouldn't come out easily like it wasn't one of those things you know where Mm -hmm. you know it's not a cartoon it's not a looney tunes where it just you know and it rips out like a zipper or something like it just doesn't work like that (laughs) they don't they don't come out that easily no they do not um but yeah um yeah yeah. you have to I have seen plenty of pre- preparations for fish. Yeah. You could like fish. I just do not. That's yeah. Like I'll eat. Like I'll eat. Um, like I love fried clams. Um, but I won't eat clams on a half shell. I won't eat raw clam. Raw fish is a little like iffy for me in general. Um, we talked about oysters. I'm not the biggest fan of sushi, but I have grown a little bit better on it. There are some that I can eat. Um, I've grown into like eating like raw tuna as an example. Right, right. And I yeah. and I'm with you on that, Damon. Like it took to adulthood for me to even get around to trying sushi. And even then, I don't have it very often. Yeah. Most of the time I will have sashimi. I will have, you know, but but when I'm having this stuff, baby, you betcha, I'm in the type of place that I get that. Yeah. Like like the concept of of uh sushi in a convenience store or in a grocery store. Yeah. No. That, that's 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 a pass no. but if i'm going to an authentic like asian cuisine mm-hmm. establishment yeah. be it you know mostly uh most likely japanese um yes like i will you know mm-hmm. have some uh and probably enjoy it like I, i've never yeah. been disappointed i'll put it that way yeah so there was one i had one roll a while back it's my favorite when we go to the space um they're actually called mr sushi so go mm. figure um and they they literally take five different like fish and they roll it in in into the roll and then they mm-hmm. tempura batter it and deep fry it and mm. then or tempura fry it and then you get it now is the fish like fully cooked probably not but mm-hmm. to me the fact that it's kind of been deep fried enough that i feel like maybe it it, it is is enough to like get my head over my mind around the whole fact that it's potentially raw fish yeah so yeah anyway jeff, so like yeah last but not least uh jeff what are what are your never ever on my life <laughs> oh honey this is kind of I a full of category all. of things uh yeah yeah I see that but we're talking about like pickled pig's feet uh-huh. and basically most fermented foods i'm not going to say all because things such as beer is fermented mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. kombucha some kombuchas mm-hmm. I, I enjoy so there are some fermented things that's why i use the caveat of most mm-hmm. um i have tried kimchi oh fermented cabbage i don't like it okay but Fair. anything else that is listed as being fermented or some weird pickle okay uh, like regular pickles like cucumber pickles. you're fine with regular picture and and there might be i haven't really tried much for other pickled vegetables but mm-hmm. a lot of the fermented or pickled foods fair okay what about sauerkraut i have tried sauerkraut i do not like sauerkraut oh no. okay God, I love sauerkraut. It, baby sauerkraut. i'm ger- i'm partially german like I, that is I've just had, a given i'm partially german too uh, we've had bratwurst as I was growing up. I love bratwurst. Mm-hmm. No sauerkraut with my bratwurst. I have, I tried, bratwurst. I have tried it. I don't like it. So I have wow. found that fermented and uh, fermented and a lot of non-common, as common, mm-hmm. I should say, pickled things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm, yeah. Uh, yeah. Like, I mean, I'm not a... a uh i don't object to it like the first time i ever heard of jardiner i was like what the fuck is that like i just yeah. never I, I, knew what is that i, I just asked him uh, I, what the fuck is that uh <laughs> hang on is it uh, is, is it is that jardiner i'm no, 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 it's, Ital- it's italian oh, i'm gonna okay. spell it out because yeah, uh, it's not what you think g i a r d i n I E R A. Ah. So it's um usually it's it's pretty because you were talking about pickled things and it's pretty popular for home canning, 
um, as a thing. It's typically pickled vegetables um, in, you know, vinegar or possibly oil. Um, and it comes in a mix. I'd never heard of it before, but being in where I am in the Northeast, when you have a lot of like um, Euro centric, like ancestry, this is a very common thing, especially if you, wanna, if you have an Italian population, because they mm-hmm. use this as a side or as a condiment yeah. like, to put it on top of uh, food. So it's, um, let me see here. So the ingredients are typically bell peppers, celery, carrots, cauliflower, and gherkins. Um, but there's, you can have hot versions, um, hot spicy jardinier or not. Um, Interesting. Yeah. So, and there's other versions of pickled foods that are very similar to this. Uh, Piccalilli is a British version. Um, Jangaji, I think my apologies for mispronouncing is a Korean version. Um, so, and some are f- fermented and some are not, but yeah, like I'd never heard of this before until what? probably around college age. And then I was like, what? And people were like, yeah, you just pickle the vegetables. And I thought, why? Why Why would you do that? Um, mind you, I am a pickle fanatic. Like, I love eating pickles. I do not mind them, whether they be, you know, like uh, on top of, you know, like a sandwich or just, you know, on the side or, you know. Um, like and it's funny because. Pickles. Well, right, right, right. And most people really, uh, Americans, because we have a problem uh with sugar most people love like sweet um pickles you know like uh the chips and stuff like that and i don't mind that but what i realized is like as a younger person i really like vinegar like that's the key thing so that's why when you're like most fermented foods i'm like uh like i'd probably be willing your game to try it because you know when i tried <clears throat> kombucha, that was like what is this um and it reminded me of like vinegar drinks, but it's not, it's different because it is fermented. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I, I think it's a lot about the what I would consider to be obscured pickled or fermented foods because mm-hmm. I have tried some non traditional. I'm not, I'm, I'm going to put that in quotes because the pickling mm-hmm. can still be traditional um, foods. And I just found that most of the time with pickling or fermentation, it's mm-hmm. not my jam. Yeah, yeah, it might be um, curious. Sorry, just it, it's very interesting that you kind of have a bigger like bubble in regards to the um, pickled stuff. But I I get it. Um, your pickled picked feet when you pr- wrote that down. I was like, yep, yep, mm-hmm. never, nope, no, thank you. Uh-uh. Especially uh-uh. pickled pickled uh, proteins. I'm gonna say protein yeah. because if I say meat. And then people go, well, what about pickled herring? And I'm like, well, I did mention fish earlier. <laughs> right. Ugh. Also, uh, pickled eggs. Nope. The, the century egg? The No, not so much the century egg, just that, pickled well, eggs. Well, that's another like, thing since we're talking about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, up in, up in my area, um, pickled eggs are really popular, especially... Um, pink eggs is sometimes they're referred to or purple eggs because they're pickled in uh with beet juice so they end up totally changing color <laughs> look at david's face um <laughs> and so that's a thing um you know it kind of reminds me of the concept of like a cuticle uh you know you were just taking foods and and doing different things to them to modify them and mm-hmm. i guess that's you know that's fine for some people but i'm like yeah. oh, uh, i don't know how i feel yeah. about that I think I'm good with like pickled veggies, certain pickled veggies. I think I'm okay with. Um, yeah, other than that, pickled cucumbers. I'm I'm good. Yes, cold pickles. I mean, there are even some uh, pickles, pickles, pickled cucumbers that I don't like. Based off fair, of, like I don't think I like the ones that are buttered, and I don't think I like gherkins. I think those are like way too sour for me. I remember oh my god gherkins are like the cutest little things they're crazy yeah. i'm like like i would just like i don't normally buy pickles a whole lot because i know me like, I like usually once i have pickles ones, I yeah see, usually once i have pickles like if i open a jar i'm in trouble like that's just it's called pickles mm-hmm. i absolutely adore oh yeah gherkins i could like i've had sweet gherkins i've not had the sour ones i'm just 
Um, yeah, I well, I I'm, I I, I think I'm thinking of sweet gherkins. The only thing is they taste sour to me. Huh? It could actually be a um, because as you kind of mentioned things like it could be a thing with vinegars for you, potentially. Maybe. Potentially, I mean, I'm just, I'm just saying that 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 could be the thing yeah, if you've I mean, never. Maybe. I mean, yeah. I mean, I, there are vinaigrettes on on salads that I'm fine with, but usually they they have other sort of flavorings to enhance mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. Mm. And not yeah. to say I don't like sour things. Like I absolutely love like my my iced tea is lemon iced tea. Lemon. I love lemonade and and like mm-hmm. kamikazes well, are my favorite favorite um, uh, alcoholic beverage, and that's made with lime. Mm. Cool. So sour stuff I still can can deal with. So, but there are certain things. Maybe it's too sour or something like that. Mm. Maybe it's. It could be like if you're and this is the thing I've had to learn about folks like some people are, are um, I don't want to call them super tasters. I mean, those that is a thing that exists, but some people are much more sensitive to mm-hmm. certain tastes. So like um, I had a friend who could not have anything that really had spice in it, like mm. even pap- paprika was too much for them. Uh, and it's not like they would go into anaphylactic shock, you know, and have this huge reaction. Don't, but it was that it was Texas. That right, that it was very unpleasant. Um, you know, putting black pepper on something might be too much for some people. So, wow. right, and so I, it could be, you know, that we have individual, you know, tastes, and certain things are just, you know, too much of a trip. Like I figured out that certain things, um, some of its temperature, some of its texture, sometimes its taste. Like there's an element that, like, it just like my body it wants to reject it and be like, mm, not, not happening. Like you can just forget that, Jack. Um, <laughs> and like that, this was one of the revelations. I think I've maybe talked about it on the podcast before. When I um, in the last place that I was uh, years ago with my former roommate who uh, owned the house, I had like gone somewhere, and anyways, I had breakfast that was left over, and it was in a container. And so I had taken it out of the fridge, and um, I had heated it in the microwave, but I didn't really kind of mix it up at all. Um, you know how like so you get hot and cold spots. In, mm-hmm. you know, a reheated dish. And so I have these, um, you know, uh, hash browns, uh, actually home fries. And, you know, I'm like, you know, and I go and I take a big old bite of these potatoes. And because of the way the kitchen was arranged, I was standing near the trash can and I immediately was like, <gasps> and like spit out the potatoes. And like, it was involuntary. Like I literally stood there shocked. It was like, what the hell just happened? Like, I could not get over how my, like, body was <laughs> Body responded. reacted to Because I was like, what is going on with me? Like, I felt possessed for the briefest second. Like, it was very <laughs> uncomfortable. And I thought about it, and I was like, oh, my God. Like, I had this flood of memories coming back from my childhood. And what I discovered is I do not care for cold potatoes. Mm-hmm. And explain so much because as a child, a lot of family get togethers, somebody would make potato salad and my mother really enjoyed potato salad and she could not understand why I hated it. Like she would try to make me try to eat it and I would literally get sick. Like mm. I just could not stomach it. And as an adult, you know, in my thirties, I suddenly realized what it was about potato salad. I was like, oh cold potatoes disgust me like it's just Mm -hmm. it's an immediate reaction thing but like and it is really about temperature and texture for taste because um i kind of making reference to being german i will eat the shit out of some hot german potato salad (laughs) like that that vinegary kind of sweet you know with potatoes and and bacon and yes um you know thank you (laughs) <laughs> yeah, so I, like i'm bad i'm the i'm the like if i'm gonna have potato salad i want it to be the cold mustard like mayonnaise yeah like, yeah yeah i'm with you on that. yeah like, like that no. although I, I, I would have the no. same thing but warm and then warm too myself so mm. i'm 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 the balance between the two of you looking yeah. at my skype window yeah the two of you. <laughs> <laughs> 
Interesting. But are we thoroughly grossed out? Uh, maybe. Everybody pull up uh, the Garbage Bell Kids to see how everything goes. Anyways. Mm. Uh, yeah, I think that's the end. I think, I think that's good. What is... What? Sorry. Oh, my antivirus suddenly was just popping oh, okay. up and like yelling at me. I don't know what well, about. <laughs> we'll, we'll wrap it up. Um, anyways, <laughs> my way to contact us. Let us know what what foods you deem to be gross. Everybody gross. has their ta- taste. So what one person thinks is gross, somebody else might. It's fine. It's fine. It's just <laughs> personal tastes and preferences, how our body reacts to certain things, such as mm-hmm. cold potato salad. You can send all that either by commenting on our blog at comesoutloud.com. Shoot us an email at comesoutloud at gmail.com. Leave us a voicemail um, at 361 we'll talk. That's 361-265-8255. Uh, you can make a comment over on Facebook, tum, tum, uh, Twitter, and YouTube. You can also join our entourage chat. Have complete discretion, a discussion about uh, what foods, gross, uh, foods okay. you deem to be gross uh, right there. <laughs> If you would like to know when we plan to be recording these shows, you can find out over on our Google Calendar at tanglerl.com slash calendar dash col. You can get various accoutrements such as a Cubs Out Loud shirt in different styles. I've got the the version three. We got a version two that Damon has. Gary has a uh, wonderful shirt designed by Smashy. And now that we're sticking his cookie. You can get one of these at Zazzle slash comes out loud. Remember, if you're in another another country, you can go to your little country code or go to Zazzle.com and then scroll down to the bottom and switch to your country. Um, you can also get other Smashy designs and Smashies. I like uh, promoting him. At, that's at tpublic.com slash user smash slash Smashy the bear. You can also uh, subscribe to us at Patreon, patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Um, get the podcast early, etc. If you would like to just send us some cash, just a, a, a friendly donation, you can do that at paypal.me slash Cubs Out Loud. You can rate us on the Apple Podcasts and uh, find us at Google Play, Spotify, and Amazon, and Audible. You can find me anywhere on the internet as Box Up Box, Puppy Box Cub Box Up or Other, or Wind Gem on Twitch, which we Bears and Dragons are currently on hiatus until Halloween, where we will be going into the Underdark. Into the Underdark. Mm. Uh, new, pl- new players, although some old players, um, uh, will be joining for that one. And uh, uh, otherwise, it'll be a lot of Final Fantasy. So that's, cool. That's pretty much it. it. Demon? Um, if, you wish to, ooh, if you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me as TheaterCup79 on most bear related sites or on Facebook. Or you can find me as Pup underscore Umbra on Twitter. The Twitter is definitely not safe for work. If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as GareBear73. And with that, say good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Ciao for now. Bye.